Hey everybody, I am Kelly Gritz. That's right, a girl raised in the South, living in Cali. I'm going to be honest with y'all. Um, I could not even muster up the enthusiasm to bring the kind of energy that I normally bring to my videos. But then when I sat here, with the climate of the nation being such as it is right now, um, I currently live in Los Angeles, and of course, with a lot of protesting and looting, there's an imposed curfew that starts early as 5 p.m. on some days. So I decided, you know what, just hold off on recording. Y'all, then all of a sudden, a light bulb went off in my head. Oh my gosh, go back to where it all started. Your very first Kelly Gritz video. You know the boys group, Boys to Men? Well, via Facebook, I reconnected with this student and actually watched him go from that boy that worked my last nerve when he was in my high school class to become a Morehouse man father and entrepreneur. I, mean, I follow his Facebook fan page to get enlightened, informed, inspired, and entertained as well as support his clothing line. The slides that you've seen are from Facebook posts on his fan page. With the push for supporting black owned businesses right now, how apropos. So I decided to go back and dig out of the archives and edit this video. Now here are a few disclaimers. First of all, the video was shot eight months ago and I did not know what I was doing at all. I did not know how to edit, how to set up my camera properly, how to adjust my light and to top things off, it rained all day long. Because of this, I could not set my camera directly in front of us and had to set it up in an awkward angle down the sidewalk to the right of us out of the rain. And y'all, I was chewing gum because I was nervous and then I forgot to take it out when I started recording. So baby, you might hear smacking, popping, and everything else during this interview. But you know what? I took this lemon of a video and made some delicious lemonade. Enjoy. Welcome back to my channel. I am Callie Gritz. That's right, a girl raised in the South, living in Cali. So you're probably looking at me saying, does she have on the shirt? Is it laying on top of her? What kind of mess is this? <laughs> well, today, sitting beside me, I have Mr. Philip Watley. And he is the founder of Ebony Lee Clothing. So I am actually on my way to see T'Challa. And yes, I am wearing my Wakanda Panthers. So, welcome, Philip. Glad to be here. You're probably wondering, who is Philip? Well, Philip is actually one of my former students from back in the day. Let me tell you a little bit about Philip. <laughs> Y'all know how you hear teachers say, oh my God, teachers lounges, we talk about, you know, what goes on in teachers lounges. We talk about kids. We talk about our problems. We talk about students that give us problems. Well, let me tell you about Mr. Philip. Mm. I taught Philip <laughs> back in 2001. I was going to say in the 1900s, but that was when I first started teaching. Oh, let me just say this too. I have retired. But retired for me just means I got tired of teaching. I stopped, started back, and then started back again. So, you know, got tired of it. That's retired for me. <laughs> now, getting back to Mr. Watley. I taught him his 12th grade year. I was brand new to the school. You know, and I was actually kind of scared because, you know, they're the, the veterans. I'm the new person coming in, but I wasn't a, a new teacher. But so, things like, oh, she look kind of young. We're going to run over her. And he actually told me one time, you the same age as my mama, baby sister. I don't have to respect you. I'm like, what? I've never been told that before in my life. You know, he's shaking his head. He's <laughs> and so, you know, I'm proud to say he's changed. But let me just tell you a little story about something that happened when I was his teacher. You know, he used to give me a hard time, you know. He was smelling himself, as the old people say back in the day. You know, trying to see what he could get away with with me. Well, one day, I had had enough. So I decided to call his mother. He came to me after school, after a little incident happened, and he came and told me, uh, yeah, I'm coming so you can apologize. I said, what's your mama's number? Let me call her right now. So I called his mama. <laughs> and, you know, she was like, he did what? And I said, yes, ma'am, he did blah, blah, blah. And so she says, do you have some time after school? And I said, sure. But I was actually kind of nervous because I was like, oh my God, what if this is an ambush? What if she's on his side and she's making me think she's on my side? And so I said, okay. So I got to the house. He didn't know that I was coming. Nope. I rang the doorbell. <laughs> and he, I heard, her, I heard her say, answer the door, Philip. 
you know, she wanted him to get that nice surprise. <laughs> so I'm standing at the door. He opened the door and he was like, <gasps> I was like, she said, speak. <laughs> uh, hello, Miss Jones. So we get inside the house. I started telling her what happened and I realized she was on my side. So I pulled out my little journal. On April 13th, at 2.03, mm. he did this. <laughs> at 6.03, he did that. And she was looking like, oh my goodness. She told him, go up there and put on your play clothes. He went upstairs, came down with some shorts, and I'm up here thinking, play clothes, this boy in the 12th grade. <laughs> oh my God. But he came down and, honey, he started whistling and she said, stop that whistling. Of course I had to throw it in there. Oh, he does that to me all the time when I'm saying something he don't like. And, you know, so she, she told him, um, she says, you know, you get ready to wash her car. And I was like, whoa, okay. And she said, Miss Jones, do you have a house? I said, yes, ma'am. She says, cause he gonna mow your grass too. And I, I was like, oh my gosh. He was just standing there like, oh my God. So then I told her, um, I said, well, you know, he might not be available, you know, to do that. Oh, it's not if he's available. <laughs> it's because he's available. <laughs> and I said, oh my goodness. But I ain't want her to, I ain't want him to know where I live because I'm like, oh, he might have some little tricks up his sleeves. I was like, uh-uh. He might set some booby traps for me around the house. I was like, oh no. But um, so yes. And he did me a nice little favor. He flipped my mirrors on the side. So when I was driving, I was trying to check my uh, side mirrors. I'm like, I don't, I don't really remember that. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> so I had to flip it out. I'm like, okay. But, you know, he came back to class. He was so angelic. The students were like, oh my God, did he get saved? Like, what happened? <laughs> he was like, um, I, he did something. And I was like, oh, okay. I made him, his mama promise that I wouldn't tell the kids that he had to wash my car and all that. I wasn't going to bring none of that up. So I had to throw a little reminder. He started acting up. Do I need to call your mom? <laughs> and he's like, oh, no ma'am, no ma'am. <laughs> and so after that, I tell you, Philip was such an angel. So now let me actually give him some time to speak because I actually reconnected with him a few years later. A lot of times we as teachers, we never get to see what happens, you know, in our minds. We like, I wonder what that child going to end up being because he sure is a little terrible. <laughs> but I actually got a chance to see. And I was so proud to know <laughs> that he had conformed. <laughs> and I want him to tell you a little bit about himself. So, Philip, you know, I was your math teacher, and I know yes. math was probably not your favorite. No, it was not. <laughs> As a lot of people hate math. So, when you left high school, what did you do after that? Uh, I went to college, Morehouse. Um, got a degree in political science. Okay. Um, I've been working in my field for a few years. I'm a um, legislative specialist now, which is basically like a policy researcher. I remember you said that you wanted to write for, I don't know, the president? You mentioned something about you wanted to be a writer back in the day. I don't yeah, remember you saying that. Um, yeah, because I, I used to, I mean, writing is my strength, even though my, yeah, I didn't take it seriously in high school, but that's actually, a, that's actually kind of my, my gift. It constitutes the majority of like my my job, being able to write, communicate, things like that. So and research. Oh, that's so. cool. Because I think I remember you had a post and you were saying um, how you owe all your math teachers an apology because yes. you ended up doing math more in your career than <laughs> you did. thought you was gonna do. I did. So going back to the story, to the original story. <laughs> let me go back. Let me fill in some. Fill in the blanks. Some blanks here. So so. Part of the reason, it, it, so when I was in high school, I was like, you know, the, the really like the jerk spark kid. Like I, you know, <laughs> I wasn't, I, I, I was just a jerk. And, uh, but I was smart, but I was yeah, also a lazy that, student. I can agree with that. He was very <laughs> smart. But ooh, yeah. baby, I agree with that part. <laughs> so, um, and I used to get called Carlton a lot. And I think that was one of the, we actually had a little, oh, a little, yeah. um, little, I don't know what you call it. It's weird. We had a little disagreement. Yeah. Because I think I did, you know, that is look. I, I guess I could dish it, but I couldn't take it. <laughs> so, you know, teachers have to balance it out too. Yeah. You know, if it's a sore spot. I didn't realize it was a sore spot for him. It was, at the time, you know, it was one of those things where like, you get called it so much that you eventually just own it. 
You know what I mean? And I actually, I love Carlton because I think Carlton just represents, <laughs> you know, you can still be, you know, black, but you ain't got to be, you know. You can like what, Tom Jones. Well, you can like Tom Jones. <laughs> like, I, I, I appreciate Carlton. So a lot of, <laughs> I actually had a nonprofit. I ran a nonprofit for like eight years, from like 19 to 27. Oh, wow. And, um, and when I was in school, I used to like hate the fact that, um, my school would refer to itself as the Black Harvard or, you know, things like that. I just felt like we can we can have excellence that's not associated with, you know, so anything else. CWI. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. So I was like, Ebony League. And I know Ebony League is not, I didn't invent the term Ebony League, but I was like, we need to own, like, this is, we're, we're Ebony League, not, not Black Ivy League, we're Ebony League. So that's kind of like how it how it started. And, um, and, you know, you know, from my posts and these things that I do, I try to have, content that is uplifting to our community but then also kind of keeps us aware of things and then i have the the merch that kind of speaks to you know um the merch yeah so i have my ebony league merch and and each each uh um, design has some kind of message tied into it so like that wakanda uh design um Black Panther was very good to me last year. Uh, there was definitely an economy that, that came from it. Yeah. And uh, so even with this design, like I wanted to incorporate the history of the actual Black Panthers with the the movie Black Panther and just yes. kind of like bridge that. This shirt right here, this is Zamunda, the Zamunda Lions. I want Y'all know that. Zamunda, right? But welcome to Zamunda. What kind of You know, the Come to America was coming yes. out next year, so. Um, but I actually have a Carlton t-shirt, too. Um, so when you create your t-shirts, like, um, I noticed on some of your t-shirts, you have, like, a, a image of the person. Mm -hmm. Do you have to get, like, copyrights for that? Mm -hmm. or? No, if you do, um, if it's animated, you can kind of work around that. You can't have the actual image of them. Yeah, because, y'all, it's, like, on my sleeve. I think it's, like, Spike yeah. Lee. Mm -hmm. And I was like, do we Spike Lee know he on my shirt? <laughs> oh. well, we, we ain't big enough yet. They ain't going to send me no cease and desist letters, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh. I was like, okay. All right, Spike. Okay, right. he got the connection. He, you know, he's a Morehouse, Morehouse man. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so maybe I was like, hey, maybe Spike was like, yeah, brother. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> no, he was, no, Spike was not like that. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, so... That's kind of like my whole thing. I, I, I like to to have rich conversations that that push us forward as a community and and um, that address you know just different things that are that are affecting us. And um, yeah, uh, tell them about some of the other these two T-shirts. But I saw one that says, "I am Lauren Lauren Hill." Oh, oh <laughs> Lauren Hill Clock. Yeah, I'll be there. Lauren Hill Clock uh, Sharp. So that's another one. It's just. We all know Lauren Hill shows up to work. I mean, well, shows up to her concerts, like whenever, late, whenever she get ready to. <laughs> so the shirt says, "I'll be there at Lauren Hill o'clock sharp." You know, it's a little tongue in cheek. You know. Yeah, it's but, good. <laughs> but, you know, but I was like, "Why have to give me one of those?" <laughs> but, but yeah. But tell them about Ebony League Radio, because that's another thing. I was right. like, when I saw the news, I was like, "Okay, yeah, radio. You got two yeah, shirts. So, He's really so, doing it." I mean, the the goal the goal was really to like to have a platform that that. So here, here's the interesting part. So you taught Zenials, like people that were born between like '77 and like '87. So we're you're like, a Zenial. Yeah, we're right okay. in, we're right in, the, right in the middle. So we, we are, we were just at the end of like when things were still kind of status quo and traditional, and right at the beginning of you know technology age, things like that. So Ebony League is like a, a space. I call it an a, an Intella lounge for like Zenials who still want to remain like connected to what's going on in the community, but at this point in your life, you like got family, you got you know responsibilities and you can't you may not be able to go out and like march and protest but you might be able to support the person that's doing it or the young people that's doing it right now so Ebony Lee Radio is like that place where you know it's a digital center like center point where you can come and be connected you know know what's going on and then you can also support because the goal is not just to talk about the stuff the goal is actually to like change you know and and um, and support people and organizations who are changing you know and doing doing great things in our community when I actually, I learn a lot from your your page. It's like, dang. So like, I love Glad learning. That. And so every time I go in there, sometimes I'm like, I'm gonna come in, I have to go Google it. I'm like, <laughs> what is he talking about? You know, but that's good because right. it makes me kind of dig deep. And then the millennials, a lot of things I feel like they can learn Absolutely. from your page. Yeah, yeah. You know, because I think even the music from then, you know, they may 
not even know like who are these people right you right know? Yes, oh my gosh, I have really enjoyed talking to you. Me too. Let me, let me, I know I've, I've done this privately, but let me publicly apologize to Ms. Jones for my behavior as a, as a, as a kid. He I, did, he did apologize. <laughs> and you know what he told me too? He has kids now. And I always believe in the, the sowing and reaping. He sold some seeds and let's pray, <laughs> let's pray for crop failure. Okay, let's pray for some crop failure. <laughs> Because with you, you would definitely reap what you sow. But it always comes back so much more than what you put I get in the it ground. My son, my son is a. <laughs> yeah. He'll, I'm pretty. He'll be watching somebody's car. <laughs> <laughs> that is too funny. Well, Philip, let's plug your platform. Okay. Tell everybody where they can find so you. So you can find me uh, Ebony League on Instagram, Ebony League Radio on Facebook, and if you want to get some merch, go to EbonyLeagueClothing.com. Oh, and mentioning merch. He actually is the reason I got my shirts made. I was like crying out, like, oh, I don't know what to do. And he got this made. Yo, isn't this beautiful? And his, I actually had another company do something for me. His, uh, the bomb. So I'll be going back to him. Yes, I really Ebony League printing it. too. We, we do yes. it's a service outside of the. And so he's going to be my printer for the rest of my merch. Hey, nice. Yes. Nice. So, um, <laughs> But please make, uh, thank you so much for tuning in today. Please be sure to turn on your notifications so you'll know when I post more videos. And please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And become a part of the Cali Grits tribe. Yes. Bye. Well, this is what I'm going to say. Um, thank you so much for um, thank you so much for tuning in today. Please turn on your notifications. Well, turn, please be sure to like. And but before that, I'm gonna make sure I tell them turn on their notifications. Okay. Okay. So let me. Um, it's still recording, but I'm on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't even know how to edit, but I'm gonna learn. <laughs> so now I gotta go and watch it to see. Well, let's let's look at it. <clears throat> I hope my camera don't get messed up because I don't know if it's weatherproof. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share my video with every Tamisha, Dictagus, and Harpo. You know, you can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Cali underscore Grits. And I created a fan page on Facebook at Cali Grits. Thank you so much for being a part of the Cali Grits tribe. Thank you.